the judge that's involved. Uh, but okay. Okay. And if they see a judge before that three days, could they incur additional criminal charges that would keep them in jail longer than that? It just depends on how they answer the officers once they get down there as far as their information goes. So, so in what you way? Say, your name is Joe Smith, but you say my name is Joe Bob. Okay. That can be an additional charge once you're under arrest for a felony that Okay. Give false information. So I can't say you know, that's going to happen. I'm just speaking in possibilities. Understood, understood. Is what they're facing right now considered a criminal charge? Yes. Okay. Will they be compelled to testify as a witness against themselves under the criminal charge? Will that they be compelled? Oh, for that arena. Fair enough. Let me get more specific so that it's not that vague. I'm trying to help you out. I understand. No, no, you're, you're fine. I yeah. can only speak to what I can speak to. Sure, understood. So when you ask them, what's your name? And they say, because I feel that that's going to be used against me, and I don't want to be compelled to answer a question that will be used against me, I decline to answer the question altogether. Would they incur additional criminal charges to do that? Yes. And that criminal charge would be labeled what? That would be failure to identify, period. But since they're already under arrest for a criminal charge, huh. then that would be enhanced to a county level charge. So then they would go to town county. So what happened in here remains within Crowley, yes. but if they fail to identify, they have to go to Tarrant County. Yes. Okay. And what do you know, by chance, the max penalty for failure to identify? Uh, I believe that's just a class B misdemeanor, so that would be up to, up to two years and just a minimal fine of a few thousand dollars. Did you say two years? Uh, possibly a uh, year and a half to two years. Of I, what? I have to look at that. Cause that uh, of I probation or jail? Uh, it's up to the county on what they want to do. Well, could they choose jail? That, that's an option. Okay, so if, if they fail to identify themselves, on a criminal charge with a maximum of three days, they could incur a penalty of up to a year and a half to two years in jail if the judges were so inclined to do so. Is that true? So that's an additional charge, then there would yeah. be a county level charge. Right. So this class B misdemeanor, uh, all the way up to first degree felony, uh, it's handled in the town county. And that district attorney's office. I understand. But what I'm trying to confine this to, I guess, is just the failure to identify because they don't want to be compelled to answer something that can be used against them. I mean, it, it seems that by even not answering at all, well, they're going to be involved in something that will be used against them. It's by law that they have to. Once you're, once you're under okay. arrest for a charge, okay. which they were, they have to then give their name, date of birth, and address. Okay. What if they choose to identify themselves as something other than a legal name assigned to them by a system that they just don't want anything to do with? like? People can identify themselves by their sure. gender sure. these days, correct? Yes. But, but you can't but identify yourself. Legally, your... they have to give that required information by law. I understand what you're saying. Yeah. What I'm saying is, I guess the issue is. They, they have the option to say, okay, my, my given name, my legal uh -huh. name is Joe Smith. Uh -huh. But I go, my name is, I go, or I see myself as Joe Bob. Uh -huh. Well, we, we have to have your legal name by law since you're under arrest for this charge. And if you don't provide that information, then you'll be charged with the failure to identify. Okay. So it seems to me that given the way the system is as you've outlined it, a person would be under heavy coercive threat of a year and a half to two years of jail potentially to not give a name. And therefore, if they give their name, they, assuming that a judge doesn't keep them in for longer, will be out in three days. It's is not that correct? It's not coercion or a threat. It's just the way the law, the law is written. That Okay. If this happens, then you have to provide X, Y, Z. If you fail to provide X, Y, Z, then you can be charged okay. with this. So you would you 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 agree with me that jail is not a pleasant thing for anybody, and that if given the choice between a for sure three days or potentially face up to a year and a half, that people would say no matter anything they had to say, even if they believed it to be a lie or disagreed with it, in order to avoid that extra jail time. Would you agree with that? Well, whatever somebody decides to do, that's upon them. But they, they there's another way to put it too, is that ignorance of the law is not an excuse. So okay. um, just because you don't know, or if you choose to believe that I don't recognize his name, 
that's that's your opinion and that's your option. But with that being said, if you choose to go that route, there's the potential of this this penalty of or charge of this that carries a penalty of this. Okay. And that's all you know. We enforce the law, but once it goes uh, past that, then that's part of the uh, judicial system past out power spectrum. So that would be handled in the court. So either with a municipal judge or a county judge. Okay, so I guess where, I, where, I, where this all started was coercion. And I was just wanting to know if, if a sergeant believes that if someone's facing for sure three days versus a potential year and a half, just by repeating a legal name that they may not identify with, want anything to do with, or believe in, that there is there or is there not a coercive threat of the violence of extended jail should they not give the answer deemed correct by the state? It's not a coercion or a threat, it's just a punishment for not giving your legal name, date of birth, and address as required by law hmm. based on... Do you believe that coercion never happens among state laws or statutes or codes, that it's not part of the system? I can't speak on uh, how the system is. It okay. is what it is. It's, Fair enough. It's written by people that I don't... Right, you're totally disconnected okay. from. I just, you just know, I go, I go to school, I get trained, here's the book, yeah, yeah, yeah. read it, know it, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then enforce what you like. And then we do that, and then it gets applied to then going up to the courts, uh -huh. and then they decide where to go from there. Sure, sure. So I, maybe, can't, maybe. I, can't, I can't speak on coercion or threat of law. I can't give an opinion on that. Do you feel fair to give a definition of it? Even if it's just your personal opinion? You don't have to give a legal definition, I'm not asking that. Like, what is coercion? Basically, when you, you're putting somebody in a situation where they have to answer something which they don't feel like they should have to answer, but you're doing it in a way that they feel that they have to answer or do a certain thing this way. What would be the reason that they would feel motivated to do it in that certain way? Because maybe uh, they're being threatened in a manner in which I, I can't say specifically, just generally they perceive a threat given by an individual trying to maybe guide them in a certain direction and try to get a specific answer. Um, I mean, would you maybe in that way. Would you consider jail a threat? Jail a threat? It's, it's a punishment, it's a consequence. Well, sure. Correct. I should be more specific. If someone said to you, or just hypothetical, I know it's silly, but I'm going to throw you in jail, is that sentence a threat to you? I'm going to throw you in jail. Or, or I'm going to confine you. Let's just put it more vague. I'm going to confine you for reasons that I have, whether or not you agree with them. Would that be considered a threat? Not between the state and a citizen, no, just any I, A person and B person. I guess, I guess maybe I'm just speed because I do what I do. Yeah, and yeah. I would say, well, that's, that's my consequence for my actions based in, in the laws of the state of Texas. Okay, just so... Just hypothetically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, right. I guess I can't answer it other than that. Yeah. Because that's just the way yeah, yeah. I see it. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's what I saw all that education and training had that, that my mind sets that way and I can understand maybe other people might perceive it or see it this way mm -hmm. because uh, different experience, life experiences in general or and, principles. And, and being a, being a civilian um, and not having certain insight to this side of things as far as law enforcement and the judicial system and, and that arena um, so yeah I can see where maybe a civilian who's not privy to all this information or, or education uh, with the law regarding this side of the case, this side of the house. Um, but yeah, if I wasn't in law enforcement, I could, I could see that well, maybe maybe that's a threat because somebody with authority is saying, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. So maybe I could proceed it that way. So I guess then the question is, can threats cause a state of coercion? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm sure there's uh, there's always a factor that, that could play into that specific scenario to play out. Okay. I appreciate the time, and sure. I, we're good in hypotheticals. Maybe I 
just a few more minutes or moments of your time. Sure. We can get away from that. Maybe lastly, I can kind of get into, um, and I don't expect you maybe comment on this, but I kind of just wanted to speak plainly with you okay. about the overall broad situation that's going on here. Okay. So what's going on is that people are attempting to be able to record audio of their own hearings. Okay. And they feel that they should be able to do that because the audios of the videos that they get from the course are edited, they cost money, there's white noise introduced, they use formats that nobody can understand, and they make it difficult. These days with all the technology, people just say, hey, if I just make an audio only recording, I don't have to rely on my memory for what the judge said, for what the prosecutor said, for what my lawyer said, for what I said. It's no longer just memory, I have it just a simple audio recording. And we just don't see how. <laughs> how that would be a problem for anyone believing in any kind of fair justice, unless, unless they know that the judges are doing and saying things that uh, the public at large won't like and maybe abusing their power. And so they think, well, they're trying to avoid transparency, they're trying to avoid accountability. They have cameras and armed men, but we can't have anything like that or even an audio recording. And so what's, what's going down is, People step it up, and then, well, what's the court going to do? They have a reaction, then people react, and the court reacts, and the people react, and the court reacts. It appears, that there, I'll get to the point, it appears that decisions have been made between whatever goes on here and whatever goes on cops here in Crowley, that if this happens, we're going to deal with this this way, a certain way. It has been dealt with a certain way. So okay. I think in, in everywhere is probably a little bit different. A little bit different, yep. Yeah. Okay, so I guess my, my message is this. Someone at some level is thinking that this is a good idea, that this will deter not only these people from doing this again, but from those people who watch these people do it. And it'll send a message throughout everyone who's watching that says, ha ha, look what happened to these people. They get thrown in jail just for standing up and asking a question. Yeah. You know what I mean? Okay, sure. so whatever decision making that's going on with whatever individuals, right. they're under the presumption that that's gonna work. Okay, they have a limited scope of this interaction between people like that and courts and cop stations, like what's going on here? Yeah, because they're not directly involved. Right. They're, they're kind of behind the scenes saying, right. hey, we're going to do blanket. Right, right, right. XYZ. Right. And because this is so new, like I said, they don't have a whole lot of experience. So they're trying to make the best decision they can for whatever reasons they have. My whole point, where I'm really getting to with all this, is this. Whatever estimation they've made that says, oh, this is going to quash this, they could. They only have so much experience. This has been a nationwide experience. Right. And these people know what's going on through all these courts and all these quote unquote states and all this stuff. And the, what we do know is that the harder they come down, the more resistance comes up. Right. You cut yes. off the head of a dragon and two grow up right. in its place. And you can see that throughout history. It's sure. A numerous things. Sure, sure. And so I guess we're just sitting back here kind of going, that's interesting, yeah. because whoever's making that decision at the top does not have that perspective, or they're being ordered to do it, they're under coercion to do it, they have a power trip to do it. I'm not saying that is, it's whatever, multiple reasons. Yeah, absolutely. But that's what they're betting on, and I'm just sitting here going, you know, we try to, we, our, our goal is to resolve things with words, so that things don't go to weapons, especially in a state like Texas. That's the goal. A move like this is a move toward the direction of weapons. And the reason why, and I'm not, I'm not saying this in any kind of threatening way, you understand. Sure. I'm only informing of the environment I see as a whole, not me individually. Okay. Because I'm trying to avoid that. Okay. So moves like this move things toward weapons because people see that if we aren't even allowed to record the audio of our own hearing, wow, what is exactly that they're getting away with? Trying, polling, power flexing, especially when you've got a lady in there who's a lawyer practicing family law and a very part-time quote-unquote judge. In a very small, whatever this is, yeah. right. And so I, that's the reason I'm really talking to you is, is to just kind of send through you because I'm the only one left. I got threatened with contempt, and I was like, "Oh, really? You want to try that?" And she thought better of it because I just did what she instructed. I'm the only one left. So this is a move that's going to inflame things, create more views, create more subscribers, create more resistance to exactly what's going on here. And we just don't understand the logic of that. Can you explain? Right. And then I think what you're doing uh, is uh, helping in the sense that, yeah, you're trying to bring things to life and maybe uh, trying to force a conversation 
with whoever is making these decisions and maybe hopefully bringing a perspective of hey this is what we're seeing what we're hearing what we're doing these are the reasons why so why is it still this way or is there something maybe moving forward that we can find some common ground uh, that would benefit both sides right and what they're running into so far is we will not have a conversation with you. Uh, whether it's a legislative branch commissioner, or whether it's a judge, or a city attorney, or the sheriff's office, or a mayor. I mean, we've, we've attempted to talk to all these people, and they will get to a point where it's like, oh, yeah, we hit a wall, we're not gonna talk to you anymore, right? So there is no one to talk to. The point the, where the rubber meets the road and the violence is inflicted is through orders of a judge, because then like you follow that. Therefore, that is the outlet because it's the only one available. And, and this is a common impression that there actually is no redress of grievance. See, because, like I'm, uh, I say this with all due respect, like I, I'm familiar with where you're at, like what you believe. I, I think I'm familiar with that. Like I've been that before. So I can kind of maybe shed some light on the viewpoint that it's coming from, because I see this, I, know, I just know what's gonna happen. The shit is gonna hit the fan. It's yeah, going to hit the fan it's hard. Going to be a blowing point. Right. So, if, if not here somewhere else, or if it's not happened already and you just don't know about it. Well, you, you hear this stuff happening all the time, like individuals and individuals. Gosh, how many cops have been shot in just the last month in this state, in this area? You know, so it's. It, I just. We, we, we see it as they're not going to let us talk their power away, they're not going to let us vote their power away. They're, they're only leaving one option. And the, and the really scary thing about that is that throughout all previous human history, in order to use the self-defensive force, now we're just gonna take up arms and see who's right that way. All previous time, that has required the presence of a human being. But because of technology, it no longer requires the presence of a human being. Because of like 3D printers and mills, you can build things anonymously, you can lob dangerous stuff out there, and technology is to the point now where things could go wrong from an anonymous source. And then what happens? Because that's brand new to humanity. Would you agree? Yeah, technology. Yeah. Right. It's constantly right, right. Just as we are. Right. And it's, you know, what's going to happen to this? It's something right. I listen to right now. Right. So right now, these powers that be at the top of making decisions to do things like that, they know that they're protected where they are and that. They're protected by the police. Okay. Our problem, a lot of police, as you know, are ex-military. Uh, our problem is not with police because we see police as, well, if they're doing their job now, a lot of police become future people like us. And we really don't need to cause a problem with them because that's not where the decisions are made. So, you know, we go to the judge. The unfortunate thing is that we actually care that police are being put in a real bad spot by them because the, the tr most people like don't look at judges like me. They look at cops. Then they're, they'd be angry at you right now. They'd be flipping you off and F word this and that and the other. I'm trying my best to chill that out, yeah. but I, it's, there's no success there. Yeah. And I just, Texas is being the hotbed it is. Are you familiar with what happened in Almost Park? Uh, I don't think I've heard about that. Oh gosh, this will take 20 seconds. So down in San Antonio, uh, the local county council, just like one here in Crowley, said, you know what, we don't like the things that's done violence, we're gonna pass something that says you can no longer carry, open carry long guns. Yeah, so, um, you just can't, you can't everywhere else in Texas, but by golly, not in our little city, because we made a rule. Yeah. Obviously dealing directly with the Constitution itself, and they hold so dear, or so they claim. So they wrote this rule, and uh, four people or so went out on the street, did it anyway. And the cops, who had never had a problem with it before, took great offense, took all, all fear, you know, guns drawn, yeah, get on the ground, yeah. right? One guy got slammed on the ground, you know, the concussion. Another guy got tased. A woman got arrested just because she had a bench warrant. She wasn't actually doing anything. And then what happened? Within two weeks, a rally formed, and there was at least 500 people all open carrying all over that city. And then what happened? Uh, the following Sunday, that happened Saturday. On Sunday, day off, the county had an emergency session. They all got together and Maybe repealed. This isn't such a good right, idea, right, repealed it, right? <laughs> And so when people see that, they go, ah, 
the only way we can really fight that is by open carrying guns and mass, which seems like volatile. That's why the cops don't even approach them. Do you think they were trying to enforce that rule Saturday? Oh, hell no, because they all want to go home safe and sound every night. So what do you feel about being put in a position where this conflict is only allowed to evolve in one direction only? There is no talking aloud because they control the narrative. Yeah, that's, that's a thing, I think, uh, in Facebook in general, there's, there's things such as this and various other things that do put us in positions where you're kind of like but at the same time we have to have that balance of okay this is what we go by and trying to find if there is any wiggle room to you know try to get through that situation even though it's uncomfortable or you're putting us kind of in a bad spot. Um, at the same time, you know, like with this specific case, she says this, then we have to do this. Oh, yeah. Because if you don't, well, well by the way, if you then, didn't, what would happen? But then, then, pretty much very much in the community in, in my department size, because I'm going to um, yeah, okay. basically do what Joe says to do, which is legal, lawful, and ethical. Oh. According to them. <laughs> okay, I'll put okay. that out there. Uh, which, you know, people have differences of opinion, but at the same time, this is what the law says and we have uh -huh. to go by. Um, and you just try to make the best of what you can do with what you're dealing with at the time and the totality of the circumstances uh, and being able just to work through it. And sometimes it's not always a good situation. And you may not agree with it, um, but it's really hard to be like 100% behind everything that's in a book that's hundreds and hundreds of pages. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, because we're all human and we're going to have opinions, but you know, we get into the job, do the job this way, you know. And it's just sometimes it can be tricky, and and sometimes it's 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 hard to make that decision. But the decision has to be made and, and be carried out with as long as you know, it's legal. If you don't. And that's where, you know, you can have debate about this or this, but I mean, you know, uh, that's that's what the system's for, I guess. In, in that sense, um, when you start breaking it down like that. And I can understand, you know, yeah, I can't. Do I agree with everything, everything in the book? Probably not. Like an audio recording of your own hearing, you think that'd be kind of reasonable? You think it'd be reasonable, but maybe there's there's reasons behind what they're doing that I don't know about, because I'm not pretty too. Well, and, in a situation like this, it's most kids come in here, oh, I went on the joyride, oh, I got caught out of curfew, here's $250 fine, over and over and over and over and over, over. That's most of what happens here. It's, it's, and yet, it's tough, right, and even just an audio recording of that, we're not talking an O.J. Simpson trial, right. and yet look how hard they're protecting it. They bring out, we don't have any men paid with money and armed right. through the teeth and coming to defend what our opinions, right. but they of course do. So I, 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 and I, and I, I can think, kind of see that, you know, you know, civilian side, okay, I'm in this situation, I see this, I'm doing this, I'm just asking this, and then, well, right? Yeah. And it's like, and then you're left with, why? And, well, we like I know. said, I, you know, it, it's, the courtroom and maybe there's decisions that I'm not privy to that they go by this standard. What what possibly you would think as a law enforcement officer, if there were reasons, it wouldn't take that long to explain or learn or through training. And why would that be held from you or be in a question mark? Yeah, I don't know either. I I do know. Well, I believe I know, and that conclusion would be Well see, so for like last three years I Okay. Okay. So, um, I'm just really uh, no. I, I just want to to wrap up here because I know you got stuff to do. I I just really kind of want to send a thing that says. 
whoever made the decision that this is going to fix that or teach these people a lesson is going to be shown in very short order how wrong they were. And if this continues to be an escalate, 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 before we came with three, then it was three again, but with more technology. Now it's four. What do you think it's going to be next time? Yeah. Because if we show up here with 200, ain't no cops going to show up and taking anybody to jail. You're going to be outnumbered unless you bring more than 200 people. You can't have 50 cops arresting 200 people. Ain't going to go well. Yeah. yeah. Especially in Texas. Right. And, and they're going to be like, this ain't worth it. So when, what? You can... When it could have been handled on this one. Exactly. And see, here's how it could be handled. It could just... Oh, so many directions I could go. This guy's being charged with a little speeding ticket. Look at what's being generated over the infliction of enforcement of one speeding ticket. Now, just if you think about, gosh, that doesn't make any sense unless they're so desperate to protect what they've got in store and to iron boot down on any resistance. I just, I'm boggled. Yeah. I'm boggled that they think this no, is going to work I, and I, make I, us I go away. You know, both. Right. Oh, no, I can't have you do this. Yeah, perfect. Okay. Okay, so they, so they say, no, you can't. And of course, what's the next question, like any two-year-old? Why? Mm -hmm. right, and then they say, oh, check it out. Like, do you see those yeah, forms they printed out in there? Uh, I had, I had oh, well, those are brand new. They printed them for us. That went effective yeah. April 25th. Anyway, so they, it's basically a statute and a code. Texas code and statute, whatever. Okay. And we go, okay, we we'll hear you on that. Now, do you mind if I clarify one thing without being tossed in jail? And today, that wasn't, that was like, nope, you're in jail. But normally, we would go, okay, you're saying that we have to do this because of a statute and code. Fine. Right. You're, you're drawing upon authority of words written down, correct? Yes. Cool. Can you please point to the words written down that connect the applicability of the statutes and codes to us here, all of us here, in 2008? Now, if you've got it, I'm out of here. I'm just investigating. I'm not here with accusations or claims or anger. If you've got it written down, just like you have the statute and code written down, that connects, oh, these, these people here for reason X, we just want to know what reason X is as it's written down by the lawmakers, that connects the statutes and codes are applicable to you and you're under them because of reason X. Yeah. See right there? They don't yeah. have that. And, they, and they sort of like what you're talking about, yeah. uh, the uncomfortableness in the situation our end, some of this vaguely written. Yeah, so they love vagueness. They and love vagueness. That's where, I guess, interpretation. interpretation <laughs> Judicial discretion, they call it. And that's it. <laughs> up here, right? Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, uh, yeah. You know, folks says this, okay, well, and that, and that happens sometimes where we get in a situation where well, it fits this. Yeah, it's a vague statute of code. But then, I guess that leads them operating room to again say whatever they want to do moving forward. And I guess that's something I'm talking about as a citizen. If that concerns me, maybe that's, I need to bring that to my congressman or my representative or whoever has influence over that to say, hey, this is what we're seeing, this is what we're hearing, and it's happening here. Here, here, this many people, or this group of people, and, and bring documentation to the page. Mm -hmm. Can we at least have you look at this and see if you're seeing the same things? So maybe we can have some more articulation within the statute of code to help define and get better to help us comprehend what we see on paper. So that's a great suggestion, and we've done that to a ex great extent. I personally, and of many others. And the answer that we get always is, I have no control over what judges do. The legislative branch cannot take back a judge's decision. We can't write rules that judges have to obey. We don't have that power. They straight up tell you we don't have the authority. And if they do, and this hasn't been happened before, where they actually said, oh, yeah, we are. We're going to write something against it. Judges higher than both levels come in and say, nope, that's unconstitutional. Sorry, pal, not going to happen. I mean, I give you real world examples. So that leads us all to believe that going to your congressperson, your senator, your mayor, whoever the hell, waste time. Because they openly claim that. Now, we believe, based on the factual evidence of just observing actual reality, that the judge is actually the most powerful position in the land. Certainly when it comes to where the rubber meets the road and the infliction of their rules. First level. 
here. Yeah, whether local or even at the national. Like, for instance, Supreme Court judges are appointed for life. Who, who else gets that? You know how much problems they can cause even the president by saying this and the other. So, I, again, I'm, again, I thank you for your time. I think it's been pr productive. It's just that I'm calling it right now, and I just want to send a, a thing, an impression. I wish I didn't have to, which is this is just going to get worse. And, and, and how, how, much, well could be. how much worse does it have to get before they go, oh, is, 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 I mean, because at some point they're going to, it's and, not going to break on open war. And we, and we see that too. You know? And, 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 yeah, we see that too. And there's, those are things that we try to pop, pop shoot on our end, troubleshoot on our end. So when we get to that situation where it does arise, how are we going to handle that? Well, we, we kind of, you know? if you have more numbers than the resistance, then you follow what they want. But if the resistance has more numbers than you, and in this day and age they can live stream to the globe instantaneously, then you just don't. Forget the rules. Just screw the rules. Somebody makes a decision, oh, pull back, pull back. And so it really just becomes a... I know. It's kind of a chat mouse type of thing until something can be changed. Yeah. And, so, then, and then who's, who's caught in between? Right. And so we don't want to have to... If our problem is with the decision makers at the top, right. when they put cops who we feel are under a certain mindset of life in general, and, and their, where their source of pay is going to come, their families, and all these pressures, they've got obligations, responsibilities. They put those in between us, and in order to get to them, they're like, ah, protect us. And it's like, most people want to go, OK. And I'm going, well, the bad guy's up here, though. And I just don't, I, I just, this is going to be the biggest thing in three and a half years I've seen doing this. And it's just going to go blow, blow, blow and up. These these two guys that you have have thousands and thousands and thousands of people around the country and elsewhere that follow exactly what's going on, and they're just going to. And this is in Texas too. In Texas too, it's like wow. Yeah, it's tough. It's basically crazy. Things and, I mean, can I walk down the sidewalk with a? I would never do this. There's no reason. But could I walk down the sidewalk with a shotgun strapped on my back? Yeah. So and, and I, I love that. And then we're running into. Can I audio video this proceeding right. in the traffic court over class C misdemeanor and they tell me no. Yeah. I can come out here and walk around with you. Yeah. You know? So they'll, yeah. And they'll do this too. Yeah. You can have a bar member attorney, they can of course so they control the career of a bar member attorney. Yeah. And you can waive that bar member attorney all together. You can just represent yourself and sign a waiver, and we will let you proceed, warning you of the danger, right. without alerting at all. But by golly, if you try to follow the Sixth Amendment that says criminal charge has the right to assistance of counsel, and you say, this is my assistance of counsel, and he doesn't have a bar membership, but this is my assistance of counsel, and I'll go down on him defending me. No. Get out. In fact, we're going to charge this guy with a crime called practicing law without a license. So it's not even, we, yeah. see, we just see it as a religion. It's just like Catholicism or Judaism or Islam has taken over, called itself government and the state. And instead of a Quran or a Bible, they've got statutes and codes and a constitution. They've got a flag. They've got priests and deacons. And everybody is down with it because might makes right and it's a monopoly over power. But you guys, are, they're, we're comparing notes online, you know, on the internet. And, hey, what are you working? What are you working? How's it working? And learning and spreading, and the, the sharpest among are disseminating this information, and it, it, it's just not going to go good yeah, unless like they open. It's just a matter of time before it happens. That probably shouldn't have had to happen because we've addressed it early on down the road. And if, but if we were to do that, they, I feel they know. Like for instance, our problem is we want auto recordings and no nonviolent victimless criminal charges, which would bankrupt them. Forget every non every nonviolent victimless criminal charge, you know, all the way down to property tax. They'd be bankrupt, but they know they can't be down with that. So yeah, it's, 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 it's interesting it's times, the, man. It's the, yeah, it's the system <laughs> and world and the United States that we live in. Yeah, it's interesting and times. Is it, so. is it perfect? No. That things can be approved on definitely. Uh, but and I'm like you too, you know, there's things like, man, I, I wish I could do this or change that. But you know, it feels like there's not enough people that can like the relief that can make that change. I'm glad and, you said that. And, uh, and it's, it's something. Yeah, I'm glad you said that because uh, I think that's something that they're betting on. Is in the past, 
you know, people more or less are trying to get by their lives and they don't involve themselves in resisting anything. It's kind of go with the flow until the pain reaches them directly. Then, only, only then, yeah. fortunately, will they act, right? Yeah. And more and more and more people are starting to feel that pain and learn about it. And I just... Yeah, and, I just, there, and there's things, you know, not, not just with this, there's other things too, just in, in real life that we see. And uh, we're like, whoa, hold on a second. How are we going to deal with this if this happens here? Or if this happens here? And then we start you know, round tabling and, and talking about things. And okay, well, this is what we think. This is what the, the law says. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, mm -hmm. all right. And then sometimes that's how maybe policy mm -hmm. comes about on our end to help us and protect us and protect the citizens too. Mm -hmm. So there's things on our end we're trying to do, and then there's things that are just out of, out of, out of control. Yeah, we know like, that. Like this, and we, we're glad that y'all know that. Cause That's why I'm not people, mad at you. Yeah, because right there's, 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 there's the other people too that take it to the extreme and then no, no, no. And then like you said, they get you know violent or profane. And we're like, no, that's not helping the situation either. Um, but it's good to have a, a dialogue like this where, okay, I can see where you're coming from. And you can see where I'm coming from, and just know that you know we're not trying to just like, hey, it's this way. I believe most of you are yeah. like that. Some of yeah. you, a small oh, yeah. fraction are. Yeah. But some, Absolutely. most of you, most people would agree, mm -hmm. would rather be able to follow their conscience, right. and then they can't all the time. Yeah. And you know that some of us recognize that, well, by golly, sometimes there are legitimate dangerous situations with legitimate bad guys, and we got to respect the fact that some people go in there and handle that, and we're glad it's not us. Yeah. And so yeah, we have that aspect of it, right? That's what we're, that's what we're, we got the job to do, you know, anything from small stuff to big time, violent things, and we know it's, it's a game. Yeah, yeah, Every yeah. day is a game, and we never know what's going to be like. So, um, that's what we do, that's what we, that's what we went into the, the, the career path of this to do, and yeah. I think, like you said, the majority of us, you know, keep that standard. Yeah, I think everybody would like that. Um, and speaking of that, I mean, I'm kind of glad you're starting. I'm glad I didn't expect to have this conversation. I'm kind of glad we are because um, I think it would be advantageous. And, and feel free to make suggestions to me. But um, I think it would be ad advantageous if someone at the police station, the local one here that was involved in this, had a sit down talk out with this side, it, my goal of such a thing would be to show that, yes, our differences are on the table. They are, but we're at least realizing that our issue is with judges. We're not going to stop. We're going to keep, I, I, I really think that 